Hey guys, it's Matt Somerset, the founder of Snap Immersion, and today I'm going to take you over part two of the stages of progression, okay? So this is all about the second half. So we're going to go over today, we've already done the transition zones, I've hopefully you watched that video, we explored each one, and now I'm going to show you how to create your own roadmap, how to make progress on your own zone, how to, sc the scorecard system so that you know you can actually track what you're doing and an easier method to track it. And finally, I'm going to show you how the system works and how it actually works in person. Okay? So, how do I create a roadmap from this? There's a three step process to making it happen. So, from that above video, let me show you how this works. So, step one is where are you currently? Finally, the next step is going to be where do I line up? to the transition zone. So that's those videos that I showed you above. And finally, step three, we need to assess the performance markers from your area of transition. So from those transition, transition zones, there's those markers and those are what you're gonna assess yourself against. So finally, okay, let's just, for an example here, let's just say this fella here is 26%. Okay, he knows his body fat percentage. Next, we're gonna pick our transition zone. So based on where he's at, what transition zone should he be going towards? So he's just, he's in about the average zone. So he's trying to pick up all the stuff from average. So then he's gonna assess those markers in the average zone and he's gonna assess himself against each one. So his protein intake, the veggie intake, the exercise, his eating behaviors, how much refined stuff he's consuming and how many caloric beverages he's consuming, okay? so. The key takeaway from all of this is if you want to sustain the results, you move up the ladder. So if you're a beginner, focus on all the stuff in the beginner zone because they're all going to move you towards the, they're all going to help you to lose weight and the more of them you can stack, the more weight you're going to lose. As soon as you have fill that section right up, you move on to the next section and that way what happens is you've mastered everything and now moving on is super simple. You just add stuff in. You add a little bit of this, take a little bit of this, and it's done. Okay, it makes life so much simpler, and I've been using this for years. So, for an example, let's say we've got our results, so we've got step one. Susie here is 35% body fat. Okay, next, she's gonna choose her transition zone. So, since she's over 32% body fat, she's starting as the eternal beginner. Okay, and next we're going to assess her performance markers. So let me give me a real life example. Susie is anonymous, but we're calling her Susie. <laughs> and I'll show you a real life example of how this works. So I'm sitting across from her, just imagine this, and this is what I'm listening for. So I know those, those little performance markers, and I'm listening for each one now. So I'm getting her to talk about foods here, and she's telling me, that yes, I know I shouldn't be eating the stuff I'm eating, but you know, I'm going out on, on the weekends and stuff, my kids have hockey, um, my husband wants to go out, whatever, and yes, I get a sub in there, you know, I'm going to Subway, I'm trying to eat healthy, so I'm picking out, okay, well the sub is definitely processed, it's more white flour and all that kind of stuff. She has like, you know, like a movie night or some kind of fun activity with the kids where she has like, maybe there's pizza involved or some other, like tacos or something like that where you're consuming um, foods that you normally wouldn't but you know are processed stuff and finally of course you got birthdays and other special occasions where cake makes an appearance you know and you're just trying to make something special for them so in her life that's exactly what was going on okay so there we go we're kind of picking it out next protein it was mostly consumed at lunch a little bit and at dinner it was was usually like some chicken breast or steak or something like that. Not much fish. She wasn't really into fish too much. Um, but most of her protein came from dinner time. Okay, so she had a solid protein at dinner time and maybe a little bit at breakfast. Finally, her exercise. Um, she came to the gym to do cardio. It wasn't really into eight weights. Um, she was fairly active. You know, she had a walking job, you know, most of the day. But most of the time, her heart rate wasn't really elevated. Um... She was looking to exercise five days a week. So using the gym, coming in, she was going to exercise five days a week. So right on. Okay, we've got some um, something to move on, move forward from. So, okay, next, caloric beverages was big. So in her coffee, she would have sugar and milk. There's some extra calories there, okay? 
Also on weekends and during the or sorry on the weekdays she'd enjoy some wine, one or two to three glasses sometimes. She would have beer or whatever with the she'd bring have some friends over and stuff with the you know with hubby and she'd be enjoying a beer with them. Um, more often than not she'd be consuming a lot more than just one. But let's just say she had one beer on the weekend or occasionally over the weekend with her husband. Okay. Next, her vegetable intake. At lunch, seemed to be most, like at breakfast, definitely not many veggies, mostly fruit. Um, other than that, lunch, she got a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit of on top of her um, sub or something like that. Um, but dinner time was solid. She had a solid fistful of vegetables and it was like a salad or some type of broccoli and a carrot, okay? Finally, her eating behavior, she had no idea how quickly she ate. She sometimes felt hungry during the day and she sometimes ate so much dinner that, because um, she was so hungry, that she'd be full, super stuffed, okay? So that was, there's another idea. So based on what we gathered here, now we can finally make some ascertain, so it makes some assessments on ourselves, okay? So we know for her criteria, for her um, eternal beginner zone, okay, her zone of transition, these were our things, the veggie, the processed foods, the caloric beverages, the exercise, okay? So now we're going to start to stack up against this. So here's Susie, and based on what she told me, we've got three different options that we can look at. We can look at meals, we can look at movement, or we can look at habits, okay? So now in meals, when I'm looking at it, she could focus now on her eating behaviors. How quickly is she eating and be more conscious of it. If she's hungry, get something to eat. If she's feeling satisfied, step away from the table. You know what I mean? If she's consuming so fast, slow it down a little bit or just understand you're eating really fast. So she has that. She could have a win just doing that. Next, she could modify a meal. So she could look at her vegetable intake and increase it by a fist. And or she, and or she could look at her protein intake and add a palm to it. Okay, so now she's getting up to two meals where she's getting daily protein intake and two meals where she's getting two fists or where a, a fistful of vegetable at each one of those meals. Next, she could look at movement. So she can increase her, so since she came in for cardio, by all means, she's going to increase her heart rate now five days a week and just do cardio. On the other side of things, she could also just do a resistance program with cardio, totally up to her but she could do resistance. So she could add resistance training to her five days a week that she's gonna come into the gym. Next, she could decrease the amount of beer, wine, um, and not, no, I wouldn't touch the coffee, but she could decrease the amount of caloric beverages that she's having, or she could decrease the amount of processed stuff that's making it into her diet and find some other strategies that would help her while she's on the road or help her while she's got all these things that come up during her day where she's reaching for the more refined stuff, okay? So if I'm looking at this though, the meals would be the easiest to modify. All I'm doing is adding stuff, not taking away. Movement would be the second easiest because she, well, movement would be almost the easiest because she's already coming in five days a week. We just need to get intentional with the movement. The toughest part would be to deal with the behavior stuff, to deal with the the, two, the wine and the beer and the, the coffee and the milk and all that and the refined stuff. So all she's going to do is pick one to two tasks because all of these tasks that she has in front of her right now would help her to lose her body fat, would get her moving in the right direction. And all she's trying to do is make it consistent, which is the key word here. Consistency is going to make all the difference for her. So let me show you what we've done so far. So now we're going to score this thing. So at this stage, we picked what were our two one to two tasks are, and we're at this stage where okay, now we need to we need to score them to make sure we're moving in the right way, and so we can troubleshoot them. So, let me show you where we're at so far. Our outcome is our transition zone. So, if we're over thirty five percent, we're trying to hit thirty two percent or whatever zone we're at. We're trying to hit within that zone. So now we've got our outcome. We know exactly where we're trying to go with things. Next, we've got our strategies. We got our performance markers. We know exactly what we need to be focusing on in order to get results. Am I doing them? Am I not? The whole key to this is the tactics of this. It's your behaviors and actions. So just because you have the strategies and you're looking at them and you know them, 
doesn't mean you're going to get the body that you want or doesn't mean you're going to get the outcome you want. But the cool thing is, as I focus on the tactics and then they're all aligned, I just need to do the behaviors, so those one to two tasks that I pick for my scorecard, and I know I'm going to get results. And what we're trying to do is take the stress out of this and make you more relaxed by just doing one to two things that you know are going to get you the result you want. So these tactics that you pull are now going to go into the scorecard. So let me show you how this works. One of the key things you got to remember is you're not getting closer to your goals because you're not being consistent. And this scorecard is exactly why we put it in place because it makes you now accountable so I don't have to be making you accountable. You are now accountable to yourself. So let me show you how to score this thing. So we've got our performance markers. So based on Susie, what she told me, two things that she decided, she went a little over and above, but she's gonna go three days a week, she wants to do strength training. She thinks it's important to keep some muscle mass around while she's trying to lose some weight. As well, she chose that she's gonna do a, a fistful of vegetables and a palm full of protein at one more meal. Okay, so that'll be a total of two meals. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you just on her performance marker on the veggies and the protein, okay? So on the weekly score sheet here, you're gonna see how that goes meal one to three or however meals you're gonna have, but you're gonna score them now. It's either a yes or a no. So I don't care now at this stage, we don't care what we consume. We care, did I consume it? Did it have protein in it? Did it hit my goal? Okay, so my goal is to get a palm full of protein and a fistful of vegetables, and you're just gonna grade it. So on Monday, yeah. At meal two, she got her protein, and at meal three, she got her protein and, and vegetables as well. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna grade the whole entire week, okay? So here's our whole entire week, and you're starting to see some patterns where sometimes you didn't hit no. And what we're doing now, so now I've got the week, is now I'm assessing it. So Susie here got 10 out of 14 times where she actually did get a protein and a fistful of vegetables at two meals, which gives us 70%. And we were trying to hit 80%. So now most people go, well, you know, it's good enough, or eh, I guess that's not a good strategy for me. I should look at changing it. Well, there's actually, this gives you a complete feedback tool because most people overestimate how many times they actually did do it. They need it tracked in order to make sure they're getting exact, they actually know, okay? So what Susie might do is assess her situation now. So at the end of the week, she'd go and she'd look at each day of the week and go, oh, okay, so on Tuesday, I didn't hit my goal. On Thursday, I didn't hit my goal. And on the weekends, weird, because weekends, I've got so much time. What the heck's going on? So she could assess it that way and go, what was going on in those week, on those days of this week? And what are some strategies I could use so I ensure that I'm actually hitting that minimum? She could do it that way. Or she can look at the meals and go, oh, look at this. Breakfast or meal one, so as soon as I'm getting up or kind of close to that, I'm actually not getting much protein or a vegetable in there. I wonder if that would be a good strategy just to bump up and try to get one more meal at that day or for my breakfast to make it into a meal that'll hit it so that I can hit my 80% um, compliance zone. And that's how she treats it. So now she can make smarter decisions based on that versus just trying to go, oh, okay, well, I'm not hitting it. What am I going to do? And kind of making sporadic decisions. She can start to go, okay, well, I can change my days of the week or I can change my meal and I can start to make smart decisions and I can start to get feedback on how I can improve on this instead of going, well, I guess I don't hit it. Okay, so what are your next steps? How do you actually apply this sucker? So first, you need to find out your body fat percentage, and it doesn't matter if it's correct. It just matters where are you now, okay? You could also do it the other way. If you don't want to find out your body fat percentage, go to the transition zone number one and go, am I hitting these? If you're not, good chances are that you're over your whatever, the 32% for the female and 25% for the male in body fat percentage. Okay, next you're gonna match your body fat percentage with the transition zone that you found out. So that part one video, you're gonna find out where you line up and you're gonna pull all of those performance markers. So number three, you're gonna find out where you're currently, what you're currently doing based on the performance markers that you pulled from your transition zone. Okay, finally, number four, you're gonna figure out some quick wins 
so that you can actually so you can actually start to make some progress towards your goal. Start to drop some body fat. Okay, so you're gonna pick one to two tasks. So number five, you're gonna pick one to two tasks and just begin applying them. Okay, chart them on that that charting the the. the scorecard system and find out how you're really doing. You're only going to need to do it for maybe a month and you're going to have these ingrained where you're, it's so easy. You might even only need it for two weeks. The whole idea though is to make sure you're troubleshooting and actually taking corrective action so you can get to that 80% compliance. Okay. Finally, if you need to, if you, I would seek some assistance if you're not progressing towards your goal number one or if you do not know where to start and you don't want to do this on your own. Okay. If you want this figured out for yourself, Snap Fitness actually has this for all of their members. So they, every month we do consultations and we apply this exact same framework to make sure you're moving towards your goals. And we even have one for gaining muscle as well. Okay. On the other side of it, on personal training, we utilize this framework so we can offer you a complete all-in-one. So we can look at all the areas, so we're not just focused on just exercise, we can actually help you with all the other areas by providing you with protein options, by helping you with protein options, and that kind of thing, and they get included in with your, with your personal training package, which is fantastic. So anyways, if you want to visit us at snapimmersion.com to find out more, Go right ahead um, and have yourself a great day.